Well, we've had a huge array of guests so far this morning, but one thing that we haven't yet touched on is an anniversary that is coming up on Wednesday. That is one year since Rishi Sunak became the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. So who better to talk through this topic with than Sir Anthony Seldon, the esteemed political historian. He's written a biographer of every prime minister since John Major, except for Liz Truss. Um, I suppose I have to first ask you, Sir Anthony, is a biography of Liz Truss on the way or does 49 days perhaps not merit one? Oh, it definitely merits one. I mean, it's fascinating. How could somebody who I think was very... Uh, talented and who had more experience uh, than most prime ministers coming to the office. She'd been around a lot. She knew what she wanted to do. How did it go so catastrophically wrong after just 49 days? There's a real story there. I mean, it's half the length of the next shortest serving prime minister, who was George Canning with uh, nearly 120 days. And, you know, what happened? Um, I love it. I mean, that's because I suppose I just love... Oh, I don't know, British history. <laughs> so perhaps that's the next book on the way. But um, turning to perhaps a longer term perspective, you wrote earlier this year that King Charles's perspective is wiser and deeper than that of Rishi Sunak or Keir Starmer. Their horizons will always be tribal and short term. Why do you think it is that King Charles is perhaps has that uh, deeper and more substantial vision than either the leader of the Labour Party or, or the Prime Minister? Well, it's nothing against those two particular people, both of whom are, I think, obviously very talented. But uh, King Charles started thinking about the country and its place in the world and how to uh, get the best out of education and health and the environment before either of those leaders were born. And so, and he learned uh, from the very best in the land, uh, one of the best in the world, the best maybe, who was his mother, the queen. And um, that kind of mentoring really matters. So that was the reason I said that. But look, I think that uh, Rishi Sunak uh, is just coming into power on an impossible wicket. And I think he's made some significant errors, but he's done some good things too. But above all, I don't think anybody would be doing any better than him. That's interesting. And perhaps it leads some, um, some analysis or pre-analysis of what a first term Keir Starmer administration might look like, perhaps very, very similar to what we've seen over the last 12 months. But, but you've also written this about Rishi Sunak, that he has been micromanaging for too long and needs to think more strategically. You say the best prime ministers have been inspirers and liberators, setting the direction rather than getting tangled up in the little details. Is that still your view of Rishi Sunak? Well, he has tried, hasn't he, with his latest initiatives at the party conference, scrapping HS2 and redistributing that money into regional transport and his decision on uh, climate change uh, and putting less immediate pain and pressure on, uh, on taxpayers now uh, and on drivers now and his reforms for the A-levels. I mean, these are all good things, uh, but it falls short of telling a story. The great prime ministers, I mean, we think of uh, Churchill, we think of Clement Attlee, we think of uh, Margaret Thatcher, all had a story to tell. Now, the story he told at the party conference was uh, quite a lot about his own personal story, which I think personally is admirable. He needed to tell a story, though, with real bite and purchase on the nation about why the Conservatives uniquely are the party to take the country forward for the next five years and why Labour are not. And he's missing that macro picture. And the macro picture he alighted on was really uh, too granular uh, and too divisive. But I think it's very difficult for him. I think he's got many of the qualities ironically were he to serve a second term which i think now is less and less likely i think he would blossom in time uh to, to be a, a really good prime minister knowing what to do in power uh but at the moment coming into power when you are 
um, 70 for nine down, if that, to use a cricket analogy or um, similar analogy with the rugby last night, um, you know, he just doesn't have a hope. It's so interesting to look at how Rishi Sunak is trying to pitch himself now as a new man, as a change candidate. Have, have we seen in the history of the office of prime minister ever such an audacious about turn, rebranding midway through a term to say that you should vote to stick with me if you want to change things? Well, the, the truth is, and this will uh, come as a shock horror to uh, party strategists and pollsters, is that rebranding never works. You've either got it. I mean, we got Thatcher at the beginning. We got Blair at the beginning. We got Churchill at the beginning. We got Clement Attlee, Lloyd George at the beginning. They didn't go in for rebrands because every fiber of their personality, their backstory, their uh, life uh, on earth uh, it tells a story. It's authentically true. And uh, I think if Richard Sunak had maybe been able you know, to study more history, uh, history is uh, always something that the great prime ministers have an intuitive understanding of, or indeed spent more time just to stand back and reflect on what his opportunity was taking over from that very low moment after Liz Truss. Uh, he could have uh, come up with a more coherent story, which he then could have stuck to. His mm. five targets that he had were too micro and were obviously ill-advised because he's not able to achieve them. Uh, we need to, it's about politics and success in politics. It's about emotion. It's about being able to get somebody. And it's hard at the moment to get what Rishi Sunak, still more the Conservatives, stand for. Uh, now, they can still win it, um, or Labour could win with a minority or a small um, majority only. Uh, but um, mm. uh, I think much of this is down to the opposition losing this general election rather than what uh, Rishi Sunak does. If I was Rishi Sunak, I'd hold it very steady. I'd be much more optimistic, um, much more open. Uh, and he's done really well on um, in the Middle East, uh, showing mm. a quality of leadership superior to Biden. Uh, he's been bold. He's been courageous. Why has he done that? Because he's been listening to historians like John Bew in number 10, always the historians and <laughs> the people who understand how the system works, how the world works, what Britain's opportunity mm. is, and how to make the most of your position as prime minister. Don't learn about it when you write your memoirs. Learn about it before you open your mouth the first no, time. Of, of course, you must must read history, otherwise you'll be doomed to repeat it. But you obviously still read history. It's interesting, though, that you say that there hasn't been a prime minister who has had a successful rebrand. All of the great prime ministers have been who they were from the start. That made me think of a certain leader of the opposition who seems to have had several different positions since he entered frontline politics. First, pretending he was a Corbynista to get elected by the Labour Party membership and now describing himself as the heir to Blair. Does this pose problems for Sir Keir Starmer? Well, I think it does. And there have been two great challenger Labour leaders in the last uh, 70 years, Harold Wilson uh, who was superb at the job, took over from Hugh Gateskill in 1963 and was just uh, an extraordinary uh, uh, speaker. He understood the nation, he understood the mood of the nation and he articulated it. Uh, and then Tony Blair, again, um, a, a, an extraordinary communicator and understander of the nation. Now, Keir Starmer is mm. neither of them. He has flip-flopped. Uh, but I think it's true that you can do that before you come to power. You can't. You can reinvent yourself as the opposition leader. It's much harder to do that once you're in number 10 as mm. the prime minister. Well, we only have 10 seconds left, Sir Anthony. But I just want to ask in a word, who was your favourite prime minister to write about? John Major. That might come as a surprise. Uh, but, I suppose but he we'll, also we'll have on a to read the book. Weekend. We have run out of time there, but Sir Anthony, thank you so much for joining us.